Holy God, we pray that you would speak your words to us this morning. May the words of my mouth and the meditations on all of our hearts be acceptable unto you. For you, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I am um, a person who is in between many things, right? Uh, We talked a couple of uh, months ago when we did our family series about birth order and how that sometimes can tell you a little bit about your personality. And because I'm number two of eight, I'm like a middle child with oldest child tendencies, so I'm neither a middle child or an eldest child. And I'm the same way when it comes to the introvert-extrovert scale. I am an introvert who fakes being an extrovert pretty well most days but I find it exhausting. And my least favorite day uh, when I was in school was always the first day of school when you had to go to the cafeteria for the first time. Can anybody relate to that? It is the worst, right? Trying to figure out who's on your schedule, especially in high school. It wasn't so much a big deal in elementary school because you were assigned your table and the whole class went together. But like in middle and high school, when you didn't know who was on your lunch schedule and you had to go in and find your table the first day and you were just hoping and praying that there was some friend who was going to find you. And I don't know about where you went to school, but in my school, people sat in very specific places. And once you found a table that first day, that was your table the rest of the year. You didn't really get to move or change to a new table if you wanted a better view. Uh, And I remember every year having this massive anxiety attack about having to go into the cafeteria and find my place the first day. Even my senior year in high school, when by then I knew a lot of people, I was our um, senior class president only because nobody else ran against me, nobody else wanted the job. Um, But I knew quite a lot of people and still I, I was terrified of that first day of school having to find my spot in the cafeteria. I kind of feel that same way during the passing of the peace at church. Does anybody else feel that way? It's kind of like the cafeteria on the first day of school, right? I went a number of years ago, about um, 10 years ago, I had a rare Sunday off and um, Dwight was working and so I went to another church to visit by myself. And it was a church where I knew some people who worshiped there, so I was going to see some friends. But they had two services and I accidentally went to the service that none of my friends went to. They all went to the early service and I went to the late service. So I got there and they said hi, but then they left me. And so I sat in the back by myself and the passing of the peace came along and they told you to get up and greet people. And I just kind of stood there because I hate the passing of the peace. It makes me nervous and I have anxiety about it. And uh, I was standing there, I said hi to just the people who were right in front of me and the people who were, um, who were standing behind me, and I didn't move out of my pew. And this lady who was sitting next to me came over and said, you, you're never going to meet anybody if you just stand there. Come with me. And so she grabbed my hand and she took me into the center aisle. And I thought maybe she was going to introduce me to people, but she took me to the center aisle and then left me there. <laughs> And I walked back to my pew and sat down. (laughs) They were really lucky I stayed for the whole service. I really, really wanted to get up and leave. We're starting a new sermon series this week called A Place to Call Home. It's our annual season of stewardship where we talk about the church and our giving and why we give and how we give and what we give. And this year, we decided to do something a little different. We want to talk instead during our stewardship series about who we are as a church. What are the characteristics that we want to lift up as Epworth United Methodist Church? Why do we exist? Who are we? So each week, we're going to talk about a different characteristic that we think represents who we are and who we want to be, what we want to live into. And this week, we're going to talk about belonging. We are a place to belong. Belong. We want people to come and be welcomed into the Epworth family to find a place to really be known. That's what our scripture is about this morning. It comes in Leviticus and is a section of teaching that is teaching the Israelites what it means to be a covenant people. 
If you remember, think back to when um, God comes and meets with Abraham, and he says to him, I'm going to make a covenant with you. A covenant is a, simply an agreement between two parties. In this case, it's an agreement between Abraham and his family and God, where God says he will do things, and Abraham says he will do things, and they agree to those two things together. So in the Abraham covenant, God says, I will be your God, and you will be my people. I will make your descendants outnumber the stars and I will give you a land flowing with milk and honey to belong to. That was their covenant. And then God comes and he renews that covenant with Jacob and he tells Jacob the same thing. I will be your God and you will be my people and I will make your descendants outnumber the grains of sand and I will give you a land flowing with milk and honey, a place and a people to belong to. And then he makes it again with all of Israel when he brings them out of slavery in Egypt and journeys with them for 40 years until they finally reach that land flowing with milk and honey. I will be your God and you will be my people. And in the midst of that, he gives them this set of rules for how to live as a covenant people. He tells them, this is what it looks like when you belong to me and I belong to you and you belong to each other. He gives them the Ten Commandments and he gives them a bunch of other laws to help them learn how to be in community together. But here's the thing about the covenant. God says to them, it doesn't just apply to you, it also applies to the strangers who will come among you. It applies to the visitors that you will have in your community. You will treat them the same as you treat one another. They will become a part of the covenant while they are with you. That's an amazing piece of the covenant that I think sometimes we forget. Covenant, as I said, in many ways is about belonging. And in order to have a place to belong to, I think you have to be truly known. And it is God who knows us that way. It is God who knows our true and authentic selves, even when we try to hide it from him. And it is God who still calls us into covenant relationship with them, even though he knows the truth about us. Really, because he knows the truth about us. That relationship, that covenant that we had with God claims us, but it also requires us to invite others into that covenant with us. Our second scripture passage from Acts gives us an idea of what that looks like. It gives us a picture of the early church. Acts chapter 2 is right after Jesus has um, died and been resurrected. And at the beginning of Acts, he goes up to heaven and he tells uh, the early church, the apostles, what they're to do. And Acts chapter 2 gives us an idea of what it is they do after Jesus leaves. It tells us that they devoted themselves to one another. They devoted themselves to worship. They met in the temple every day, and every day they broke bread together. They shared their possessions with one another and cared for those who needed caring. It's a beautiful picture about, I think, what it really looks like to be the church, to belong not only to God, but to belong to one another. As we continue into our stewardship series in the next couple of weeks, we wanted to give you every week an idea of um, one person who has experienced Epworth in the way that we're talking about. So each week we're going to watch a video testimony of one of our members who has experienced that particular characteristic. This week we're going to watch a video um, of a woman named Karen Frank. Now I want to tell you a little bit about her before you watch the video. She's going to say some of this in the video, but I told her I would say it too. Karen came to church to Epworth for the first time two Easter's ago. And she came on crutches because she'd broken her foot. And she, uh, she came up and she had communion. I remember her coming. There, we had a lot of visitors that Easter, if you remember. We were packed two Easter's ago. But I remembered Karen because she was on crutches. And it has become part of Pastor Bill and I's practice that when we have a visitor, uh, if, the, if they sign our visitor book, so if you're a visitor, please sign our, the book in your pew so we can do this, uh, we send a handwritten card thanking them for coming and worshiping with us and inviting them to be in conversation with us. So that Easter, we had three visitors who signed in the book, and I sent three cards to those visitors. And Karen sent me a thank you note for sending her a note. Right? She's one of those people when we talked about notes a couple sermon series ago that she's the person who sends the thank you note for you sending the thank you note to her. She's, she's like that, whereas I hardly ever even send the thank you notes to begin with. 
So, uh, so Karen came in and we met together and she began to come to Bible study. Karen um, doesn't usually come to worship with us on Sunday morning. Instead, she is one of our community members who watches our worship service online every week. So we give thanks for our video ministry that our folks do in the back because we have people who watch it every week. And Karen emails me about the sermon every week to ask me questions or to tell me whether or not she liked it or to tell me what she got out of it. Every week I get an email from Karen about the sermon. So I wanted you to see a little bit about what Epworth has meant to her and how it has changed her and how she has experienced it as a place to belong. So let's watch together. Hi, my name is Karen Frank. When Pastor Trish first spoke to me about the stewardship program and asked me if I might speak about the need to belong, I knew that I would have to be the first speaker because everything else that follows is based upon our need to belong. If we feel estranged and separate and distant from everyone and everything, we can never truly heal. Everyone wants to belong. God made us that way. He made us for a relationship with himself, and he made us for a relationship with each other. But before coming to Epworth Church, I found myself in a lifestyle that was both illegal and immoral. I was taking and selling huge amounts of illegal drugs that were affecting me spiritually, physically, and emotionally to the point that I didn't know who or even what I was. And I came to the point where I didn't think I could ever belong to anything that was good again. And the drugs continued to affect my whole life to the point I didn't see a way out. So one day when I was about as low as low can go, I challenged God to just give me a reason to be, a reason to stay, a place where I could go and feel good about myself again. And all I can tell you is that the Holy Spirit heard my call and through a series of what I know are miracles led me to Epworth Church on an Easter Sunday where I met Pastor Trish, who also followed the Holy Spirit's call and asked me if I needed to talk. And so we did, and as we talked, I found something I hadn't had in a long time and that was acceptance and non-judgment. And even as I was speaking to her and telling her the worst things I had done, never once did she ask me to change or be anything else than what I was right then. And she promised me that God would be the same, that he would take me as I was right then. And I remember so clearly her telling me that her prayer for me was that one day I might find a home and a place to belong at Epworth Church. And she asked me just to try. So I went to my first Bible study expecting to feel totally out of place, when instead I was totally accepted, made to feel part of the group, and eventually I forgot to worry if I sounded or looked different. And as time went on, I realized I was comfortable and I had a f found a place to belong, and I joined Epworth Church. And since then, I've learned that God's grace is far greater than any sin I could ever commit, and that he gives that grace freely to me and to you, and he asks us to give it to one another. He asks us to belong to one another. And I've learned that there is nothing we can do, never ever, that can separate us from the love of God because he chose us and we belong to him. And no matter how dark it might seem or how deep the hole that we've dug for ourselves might seem, and even if it seems that we're standing alone, God is with us, God is faithful, and God never leaves. This is where my talk is supposed to stop, but I wanted to take a chance, a, a chance to thank all of the members who were so kind to me and welcoming me when I first came, and to say that as the hands and feet of Christ, you do make a difference, and you did make a difference in my life. Isn't that an amazing story? I have to tell you, as a pastor, I'm so proud to be the pastor of a place uh, where Karen could come and feel welcomed in um, the Thursday night Bible study is the first one that she came to. And, uh, and that has happened for so many people who have come to that group and, uh, and to worship with us. So thank you for being a place where uh, all of us can belong. I think, um, you know, one of the important things that Karen said is a reminder to all of us that God accepts us right where we are. And our job as a church is to accept people where they are, but also to call them to change. 
Those uh, um, of our friends who know Karen from Bible study can tell you that over the past two years, Karen has changed tremendously as she's been in Bible study and worship with us. And that's true for all of us who have found a place to truly belong, to truly be our authentic selves, a place where God loves us and changes us and teaches us about what it means to be a disciple. When I was in high school, um, our youth group had started to uh, die away a little bit. It had gotten a lot smaller. And uh, a group of friends and I um, came together with our Bible study leader and our youth pastor and began to talk about what was happening. And one of the things that we noticed was that there were a lot of cliques within our youth group that had been rather large. We'd had like 25 or 30 people. Um, and it started to die off because those cliques were making people to not feel welcome within our youth group. So we decided to make a change. The group of us, there were about five of us who were seniors at the time, decided that any time a visitor came in, we would be the first to go over and greet that visitor, and we would take them with us. We sat in a circle in our um, fellowship hall where we met at the time, and we would take them with us to sit with us through the whole thing so that they didn't feel like they were alone or, or afraid to meet new people. When it was time to have snack time, we would take them over to the snack time. Each of us were kind of assigned to visitors as they came in, so that they didn't have to feel um, like they were intruding in the group. And what started to happen was that people began to feel welcome, whether or not they were like us. We had all different kinds of people within our youth group. We had the nerds and the people who didn't really have money friends at school, and we had the jocks and the cheerleaders, and all of those groups of people existed within our youth group. And over a year, our youth group doubled in size because of the welcome that those visitors felt. And that youth group doubling in size began to affect our worship, which also began to grow because people's uh, kids felt welcome and so their uh, parents began to feel welcome within worship. I wonder what would happen if we began to do that, if when we saw a visitor or a new person at church, we took it upon ourselves to go and sit with them, to take them down to fellowship hour, to talk with them, to show them the church, and to begin to give them a place to belong. Because that's why we exist. We exist so that we can be a part of God calling people into a covenant relationship. We exist so that we can give people a home, a place to be known by God and to be known and loved by us. Just as my prayer for Karen was that she would find a place to belong here at Epworth, that's my prayer for all of us. For those who have been coming for years, for those who have been coming for months, and for those who are here for the first time, that this would be a place where you can belong, where you can be fully known by God and loved by us. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for all of the ways that you call us into relationship with you. We thank you for giving us a place like Epworth to belong, a place where we can call home, a place where we can be known and loved, a place where we can learn what it means to be in covenant community with one another. So we pray that you would bless us as a church as we seek to be that for one another, as we seek to belong not only to you but to one another. We pray that you would give us wisdom and strength and grace to share. And we pray these things in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen.